Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with um, Heart Attack, Stroke, and Cancer Prevention. We're uh, recording another video today in a series on metformin. Um, <clears throat> other items in the series uh, include uh, metformin and diabetes, weight loss, anti-aging, and even cancer prevention. These impacts appear to uh, occur due to metformin's impact on a very common um, metabolic uh, pathway, the one used with uh, glucose, glucose metabolism. It impacts a thing called AMPK. Um, <clears throat> this is especially important for 9P21 inheritance, inheritance of uh, high-risk gene alleles in the P21 area of chromosome 9. Now, again, I'll try to back off on some of the scientific stuff. But the point behind that is most of us have risk areas within that gene area, the 9P21 gene. Uh, it used to be known as the uh, cancer gene. Then a fellow named Brad Bale and Amy Doneen wrote a book called Beat the Heart Attack Gene. They thought it was the heart attack gene. Actually, it's the, there's a common denominator for both. It's 9P21 causing diabetes. And the diabetes component is exactly what um, metformin impacts. So when you think about uh, diabetes as a problem with glucose metabolism, glucose is the major starting point for most of our energy within every cell. And many of us have problems with the genetic components of that metabolism. In fact, as we start to get old, those genetic uh, components of glucose metabolism or energy production start breaking down in all of our cells. So once you begin to understand that, the far-reaching impact of metformin begins to make sense. <clears throat> Today's video is about neuroprotection. Uh, what's that mean? Protection against uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, um, all, the, all the bad things that go on with your brain, and, um, and getting older. So, <clears throat> on a personal note, I'll say I have a uh, strong 9P21 uh, genetic problems. I already have prediabetes. My family has been touched by uh, these genetic problems in terms of the brain. My grandfather had severe problems with Parkinson's. My father, his son, and uh, his wife both had uh, dementia as they got into their 70s. Um, so Again, all of this, how can metformin be a neuroprotectant? How can it protect um, items in the brain? Well, again, if you think about uh, metformin's impact in all of the areas, all of the different areas of glucose metabolism, ranging from uh, impacting the liver's uh, production of glucose and release of glucose to glucose within uh, how glucose enters the cell, how glucose gets transported from the cell membrane to the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell, and especially what happens within that mitochondria or powerhouse. Then go back and think about all of those functions happen within the brain. So, <clears throat> is there research that's, uh, that's indicated that this is a possibility? Oh, yes. Um, there's about half a billion a year in research uh, funded at the NIH from the feds alone on Alzheimer's research. Uh, when you look at the total of funding around uh, dementia um, and senility, it's probably closer to two billion a year. Uh, there's some things that have been discovered already. Um, metformin reduces the level of an enzyme that generates beta amyloid. Now, Amyloid has been implicated multiple times within uh, dementia. 
Am, am, beta amyloid and tau are both proteins that are misfolded within brain cells. They're a huge portion of the research around dementia focuses on these misfolded proteins. And again, metformin impacts that and decreases the harm, harmful uh, impacts of it. It uh, decreases the harmful impact of beta amyloid on the brain cell. It reduces the levels of alpha synuclein, another protein that accumulates in brain, uh, damaged brain cells. This one in Parkinson's disease. Metformin uh, prevents the loss of dopamine producing brain cells in a, in a model of Parkinson's. So again, there are uh, neurotransmitters involved as well, and metformin does appear to impact those. Metformin has been shown to impact the uh, motor, motor coordination of mice with Parkinson's. And again, the problem with Parkinson's is not there is some dementia associated with it, but it's also a movement disorder, and there's there have been some impact on these movement disorders associated with using metformin. Um, dementia and Alzheimer's have been listed, have been uh, called diabetes of the brain, or type three diabetes. You know, type one diabetes is where you get it as a kid, very strong or brittle diabetes. Then type 2 diabetes is the far more common type of diabetes that we see among people that are getting older. Uh, over half of us between ages 50 and 60 uh, develop prediabetes. Very common types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. More recently, senility, um, Alzheimer's have been, been called type 3 diabetes because of the tight link between diabetes and these diseases and this neurological function. Now, remember, there are problems with uh, metformin just like there are with any prescription drug. Uh, these problems aren't uh, uh, incredibly serious, but they can be a they are problems. Uh, the most common problems you get with um, metformin use have to do with GI distress, um, gas, diarrhea. Both of those can be managed by starting with a lower dose and then giving some time to work up to the uh, therapeutic doses, which seem to range between uh, one and two grams per day. There is one uh, serious concern about uh, metformin use, a fear of lactic acidosis, which you see with the other biguanides, the other class uh, drugs in that class. That has been studied and uh, lactic acidosis does not appear to be a, a real concern for metformin with um, routine doses and even much higher doses. Thanks.